Hi divers, what's up? Welcome to a new gear review of mine. In this video I compare three very different action cams for scuba divers. The GoPro Hero 9, the Paralens Vaquita and the Insta360 ONE R 4K version. Let's find out which one is the best to get your underwater footage right. Coming up. A wise man once said, there are two easy ways into personal bankruptcy, technical diving and underwater photography. And what can I say? I think it's true. Let me by the way know in the comments what you think about that. Anyway, if you're not too sophisticated in terms of underwater photography or videography and you want to save up some money for let's say technical diving, holidays or whatever, but still want to compress the memories of your dives into silicon, an action cam is a good alternative to a real underwater camera that can cost a couple thousand bucks. There are many action cams in the market, but for this comparison I picked three in some ways very similar, but still very different models. First, the top dog and mother of all action cams, the GoPro Hero 9 Black. GoPro is in the game for a long time and their cameras are widely used from mountaineering over car racing to scuba diving and it's just natural to have this guy in the comparison. The next model I choose is the Paralens Vaquita. Paralens claims to produce cameras from divers for divers. The brand is rather small and not widely known, however, their target customer is the ambitious scuba diver or technical diver and they construct their cameras with this kind of divers in their minds, so of course they should be in this comparison, since this camera is a specialist. The third one is the Insta360 ONE R, which is more a newcomer. Still, they teamed up recently with big players like Leica and Matterport and have some experience in the field of 360 degrees cameras. The special thing with the Insta360 is that it is a modular camera, so you have the brain of the camera with the LCD screen and the module that takes the lens and the sensor and the battery. You can just build your own camera in some way, so if you like to film yourself, you can just turn the LCD screen in this way and if you film something pointing away from you, you can turn it around and then you can watch what you're filming. And they offer more modules that can replace the 4K lens like a 5.3K with an 1 inch sensor and the 360 degree camera. And I guess they announced a bunch of other modules for this camera in the future. Since it is rated as the invention of the year 2020 by many tech magazines, I'd like to have a closer look into this camera and try to find out if it can compete the top dog and the specialist. For this comparison I set all cameras to shoot videos in 4K at 30 frames per second since these were the settings all cameras featured and quite frankly most people use these settings anyway cause filming in a bit higher frame rate like 30 frames per second and interpreting it as 24 or 25 fps in post gives you that smooth and dreamy look most people like for underwater footage. However, there are some disadvantages filming in 30 frames per second, but I talk about that later in this video. I just use the camera without any additional light and have all three cameras set up side by side. The Paralens Vaquita features a depth dependent color correction, that means it corrects the colors of the footage according to the current depth. All footage from the Paralens is shown with the DCC mode set to active. 
The Insta360 features an underwater color correction and post through the mobile app, respectively the Insta360 Studio, which is available for free for PC and Mac. All footage from the Insta360 One R is color corrected with this software. The footage from the Hero 9 Black is not corrected for this review since GoPro doesn't offer a simple to use solution to color correct. However, you can at any time color correct it manually in Premiere Pro, Final Cut X or similar programs. I now go through different aspects and I rate the three cameras with three two, one or zero points, so we sum up the points in the end. I did not get any money for this review, nor did I get anything for free for it. I bought all three cameras with my own money, so I'm as unbiased as always. Before we start the actual comparison, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell and maybe give me a thumbs up. I'm doing a lot of gear reviews on this channel and by this you don't miss any upcoming videos. As always, you can ask questions in the comments and I'm happy to answer them. Now let's first talk about the most important aspect of an action camera or any camera, the image quality. For this test all footage was shot in 4K, however the cameras differ in maximum resolution slightly. The GoPro can go up to 5K while the Parallels and the Insta360 can shoot in 4K max. However, as I said, the Insta360 is a modular camera and there is a 5.3K 1 inch module available if you like to go for a higher resolution than 4K and who knows, maybe they produce a 6K or 8K module in the future. Still, for this comparison I use the 4K module. Because of the higher possible resolution, I give 3 points to the GoPro Hero 9 Black, 2 points to the Insta360 One R because of the upgradability to a higher resolution module and 1 point to the Paralens since it can just shoot in 4K Max, which by the way should be sufficient for most applications though. To show action, sometimes it's very useful to show a video in slow motion. Slow motion in a nutshell, to create a slow-mo you need to shoot the footage in a high frame rate and interpret it later as lower frame rate footage. For instance, if you shoot video with 60 frames per second and later interpret it as 30 frames per second, it's a two-fold slow-mo or the video plays with half the speed than it originally was. Hence, the higher the frame rate, the better or more distinctly the slow-mo effect is. Since the amount of data increases with increasing frame rate, higher frame rates are usually limited to lower resolutions, otherwise the camera is not able to keep up with the high data strength. I know slow motion is not really a thing in diving videos since people move slowly there anyways. But you might use it. Maybe you want to show an animal hunting in slow-mo or something like jumping from a boat where slow-mo video can create cool effects. So that's a reason why I consider maximum frame rate to be important even for a camera used when scuba diving. The GoPro can shoot with 60 frames in 4K, 120 frames in 2.7K and the highest frame rate possible is 240 frames per second when shooting in 1080p. The Parallens Vaquita can shoot 60 frames per second in 4K and in 2.7K and 240 frames per second in 1080p. The Insta360 One R can shoot, like the others, 60 frames per second in 4K, 100 FPS in 2.7K and 200 FPS in 1080p. So in the end, they are quite similar. The Insta360 has the lowest maximum frame rate overall, but can shoot at a higher frame rate in 2.7K than the Parallels Vaquita. So the GoPro has definitely its nose ahead in terms of frame rate and earns 3 points. 
the maximum frame rate for the Insta is the lowest. However, it can shoot 100 FPS in 2.7K and to be honest, we're in 2021 and 1080p is going to be something of the past, so I think because of the higher frame rate in 2.7K, I give two points to the Insta360 and one point to the Perlance Vaquita. Speaking of frame rates, there is another important aspect when it comes to frame rates, especially when filming in artificial light. For the human eye invisible, artificial light sources like neon tubes flicker accordingly to the frequency of the power grid. In Europe the frequency is mostly 50 Hz, while it is 60 Hz in the US for instance. Depending on the grid frequency, the frame rate of the camera has to be set accordingly. Otherwise you can see the image flickering, which is kinda annoying. Sure, normally artificial light sources underwater and natural light don't have this problem. But if you like to film something illuminated by at least a neon tube, like a dive center or below deck of a diving boat, you will get this flickering. So if the grid frequency is 60 Hz, you should film with a frame rate which is a fraction or multiple of 60 frames per second. So in the US, your desired frame rate was 30 FPS, 60 FPS, 120 FPS, and so on. In Europe, the desired frame rate was 25 FPS, 50 FPS, 100 FPS, and so on. Let's again have a look on the frame rates. The GoPro can shoot in 24, 30, 60, 120, and 240 FPS, so it's good for a grid frequency of 60 Hz. In the US or in places with a 60 Hz grid, you are good with that, but in Europe, you will see flickering even a slow flicker with the 24 FPS on the GoPro. The parallels can just shoot in multiples of 60, so good in the US and similar countries, but flickering in Europe. The Insta360 ONE R can shoot in more different frame rates like 24, 25, 30, 60, 100, 120 and 200 FPS. That means you can use it with 25 FPS in Europe and 30 FPS in the US. Just with the highest frame rate of 200 FPS you are good in Europe but maybe flickering in the US. Still. I didn't try the feature, but the Insta360 has a built-in flicker compensation that can be set to 50Hz or 60Hz, so maybe you don't have this problem with higher frame rates at all. If you're living in the US and you already own an Insta360 or one, please leave me a comment if the flicker compensation solves flickering problems at even higher frame rates. So this adaptability of the Insta360 makes it earn 3 points in my opinion. The GoPro has at least a 24 frames per second option, which is not perfect but better than nothing, so it earns 2 points, while the Paralens with its limited frame rate options just gets 1 point here. Next big thing for underwater video are the colors. As you already know from your beginners class is that the deeper you dive, the colors you get change since different wavelengths of the light are absorbed by the water. You first lose the reddish colors, then yellow, green and blue in the end. That is the reason why underwater footage that is not color corrected looks always bluish or greenish depending if you film in the sea or in a nutrient rich freshwater lake. One possibility to solve this problem at least in close proximity to the camera would be using artificial light. However, most people using just point and shoot cameras don't own expensive underwater video lights. That was the reason, by the way, to do this review entirely without artificial light. Now, as I said in the beginning, the Perlins Vaquita is a camera that was designed with scuba divers in mind and especially with divers who go a little deeper. The Vaquita features a depth-dependent color correction called DCC. That means the camera knows your depth and corrects the colors accordingly in order to get a natural looking image without this 
bluish or greenish hue. And quite frankly, as you can see when compared side by side, it does this really well. Sometimes, if you have a light beam close to the camera, the light appears to be red because the camera applies a virtual red or magenta filter literally. Still, the automatic color correction is really awesome and it adapts to your diving depth, which is really an awesome feature, especially if you do deeper dives without artificial light. That makes this camera earn three points for the color correction. The Insta360 has no built-in color correction, so straight out of the camera, the video has a bluish hue. However, the Insta360 One R app, which is available on Android and iOS, as well as the desktop version Insta360 Studio, which is available for Windows and Mac OS, offers an automatic color correction for underwater footage, which does a quite decent job. Unfortunately, the camera has no depth sensor, so the color correction is not depth dependent. I just tried it up to a bit more than 20 meters, but I assume in greater depth, it is not as accurate as the Paralens DDC. The GoPro Hero 9 Black offers no automatic color correction. Of course, it is possible to correct colors in post using something like Premiere Pro, but this needs some skill. And you could use a bunch of filters like red or magenta filters to get rid of the bluish or greenish hue in water. So coming to the points for this, three definitely for the parallels, two for the Insta360, and since there is no automatic color correction or underwater mode in the GoPro, zero for the Hero 9. Next important feature of action cams is the motion stabilization. If you film by hand without a gimbal or dolly or something like that, your footage is most likely really shaky. It's not such a big thing underwater since you move a bit slower underwater, you have no road bumps or stuff like that, but still, footage can look shaky even underwater. And at least when you film something on land, walking like walking to the boat at a dive center or something like that, you need image stabilization if you want your footage to look really smooth and buttery. All three cameras offer image stabilization at very different quality levels. The GoPro Hero 9 has impressive image stabilization right out of the camera. It's really hard to get shaky footage with this camera and you can even boost up the stabilization. The footage from the GoPro film for this review has just the standard image stabilization activated, but still it's impressive. The in-camera image stabilization of the Parallels and the Insta360 is quite comparable, but cannot keep up with the superb image stabilization of the Hero 9. Especially if you're walking on land like me on the exit from the water here, the footage looks kind of shaky. However, the Insta360 app features a function called flow state stabilization, which stabilizes your footage afterwards through the app or desktop software. You can see here the effect of flow state stabilization. So, Coming to the points for image stabilization, the stabilization of the GoPro is just awesome and earns three points. The Insta360 gets two points because the stabilization is good but not as great as in the Hero 9, but through the app the footage can be stabilized in post. The Perlins Vikita earns one point since it has some image stabilization, but it is not as good as the GoPro stabilization and they don't offer something like the flow state stabilization. As the next point, let's talk about dive depth of these cameras. This is where you can see that the Vikita was designed by divers for divers, especially with the technical diver in mind. This camera is waterproof up to 350 meters slash 1150 feet without any additional housing, which is insane. I assume 
there have only been very few dives in history of mankind that could not have been accompanied by this camera. The whole camera is sealed by three O-rings in the rear part. Still, you can really easily open up by pulling this metal ring and it just pops up. This is definitely worth three points and to be honest, there is no other action cam in the market that can keep up with this. Let's have a look at the Hero 9 and the Insta360, which were both not specifically designed for divers and since they target a less specialized market, they do for sure not target technical divers. Without any housing, the Insta360 is certified up to 5 meters slash 16 feet, while the Hero 9 can go as deep as 10 meters 33 feet without additional protection. Both companies offer additional housings for around 50 bucks that can take the cameras up to 60 meters slash 190 feet. Since GoPros are in the market for a long time now, there are a lot of aftermarket products available like an aluminum underwater housing that can take the camera down to as much as 250 meters or 820 feet, which is almost the range of the Vaquita. Still, these housings cost almost as much as the whole camera. So for the better dive depth with outhousing and the aftermarket housing options, the Hero 9 earns two points. I could not find a manufacturer that produces deep dive housings for the Insta361R and because it goes only down to 5 meters, I awarded one point. But not without mentioning that it is indeed impressive that a modular camera without a closed body is even waterproof. Let's now have a look at the overall usability, meaning handling and mounting options. Once again, you can clearly see that the Paralens is designed by divers. The entire camera can be controlled with one really big button like this, which can even be used with the thickest dry gloves you can think of. You have this big ring to switch between different submenus which can then be easily used by the single button. When it comes to mounting, there is a very nice mount included in the package that has a standard one quarter inch thread. Because of the streamlined body, I have no doubt that this camera is very stable when mounted on a scooter. Even in narrow parts of a cave or wreck, the risk of breaking the camera away by accident is really small and due to the rugged body made from aluminum, this camera is literally indestructible. However, I don't really know if you can use the cheap fake GoPro mounts from eBay if you need to, to fix it to like a pole or somewhere else. The Insta360 and the GoPro are quite similar. They use the well-known GoPro mounts that can be screwed onto things but also use sticky pads and stuff like that. Still, these cameras are less streamlined and the housings are made from plastic so they appear to be less rugged. I don't know if it's really fun using them on a scooter riding with high speed. When it comes to the handling, both cameras have two push buttons here and the Insta has them here on the top. And I personally have no problems using them with thick dry gloves, but it is not as comfortable as with the Paralens with this really, really big slider. So the Paralens gets three points and the Insta360 and the GoPro get one point each for mounting and handling. The display might not be too important for an action cam. Still, many people love to see what they film. The Hero 9 has a very nice display on the rear side, as you can see here, and a very small display on the front. The front display is really small, low resolution and quite laggy, and it appears to have like 10 frames per second. But to just check if you are in the frame, it's okay. The Insta360 has a smaller display, 
but since this camera is modular, as I said before, can be used as a front or rear display depending on how you mount it. The Paralens has a really small display, maybe you can see it here, and it is really hard to recognize anything. It's really laggy, kind of like the GoPro front display, so in my opinion it's not really useful. But at least it consumes less energy, what can be an advantage. Points for the displays, GoPro 3, Insta360 2 and Paralens 1 point. All cameras come with an app and of course an app makes sense to directly watch the videos after a dive or even directly post it to social media. The GoPro app is, well, mediocre. It's okay, it does what it should, you can watch the videos, transfer them to your phone and edit small things. The Paralens app is, in my opinion, really crappy. When I tested it out, it often lost the connection to the camera and the UX is not really well made in my opinion, so I didn't really like the app and I think I won't use it by now. The best app is provided by the Insta360. You can do everything this app should, like downloading videos, flow state stabilization and color correction as mentioned before, but it's really easy and fun to edit and post your videos to social media. It can automatically edit videos and create stories using artificial intelligence and the UX is, in my opinion, very neat and clearly structured. They even offer many tutorials in the app on how to shoot and edit specific footage and how to use the app, which is really a good thing. So the Insta360 gets 3 points for the app, the GoPro 2 and the Paralens 1 point for the app. A really important aspect is the battery runtime. I let all cameras run a long recording without stopping. The water temperature was 4 degrees centigrade, all batteries fully charged. I switched on the GoPro and Insta360 display a few times to check the framing, but I didn't let it run for the whole time. The Vakita display was on all the time since there is no auto off or manual off function for the display. Still, it's a really really small display so it does not consume much energy. The shortest runtime had the Insta360 with 71 minutes. The next was the GoPro with 91 minutes and the longest runtime gave the Vakita with 99 minutes. There is just one downside of the Paralens Vikita in terms of battery and this is you cannot exchange the battery. It has the longest runtime, but after that you need to plug the whole camera in. With the GoPro and the Insta360 you can just exchange the battery. For the Insta360 there is a high capacity battery available that gives you much more runtime though. Hence the points for the battery are Vakita 2 points for the longest runtime, but no possibility to switch batteries. GoPro 2 points, Insta360 2 points since they offer a high capacity battery. I know the price is not the most important thing, but still something to consider. The Paralens Vakita comes at 750 euros and is the most expensive one. The next one is the GoPro Hero 9 Black. Together with the 60m underwater housing, you can get this camera for around 500 euro depending on where you buy it. The cheapest one was the Insta360 with only 380 euros, including the dive housing and a second battery. So 3 points for the Insta360, 2 points for the GoPro Hero 9 and 1 point for the Paralens Vakita. Just note that if you need to dive to deeper than 60 meters 190 feet, you pay easily 300 bucks more for a deep dive housing for the GoPro, so in that case it's around the same price or even a bit more expensive than the Paralens. Last but not least, I'd like to give some additional points for extra features. The Insta360 gets 3 points extra for the modularity. I can easily upgrade this camera to a better sensor using the one inch mod or even make it a 360 camera which gives you a whole lot of new creative options. 
They even have a 360 underwater housing. Spoiler, I'm making a video about that in the future and they announced a dual vision model to film 3D movies. Just imagine, 3D footage with a consumer camera? That's insane for underwater videographers. The Paralens gets one additional point because I think this camera has a lot of potential and they really have technical divers in their minds, what I really like. Still, they are not using the full potential of this camera, but I'm sure these guys are keeping up. The GoPro gets one additional point because of the hindsight feature, which is really nice. This function records things that happened the last 30 seconds before you hit the record button. So in case you have been too stunned because of a whale shark to directly hit record, you don't miss the 30 seconds before and you can hit record and the whale shark is in your frame. Before I sum up the review and tell you which camera is the one I like best, please give me a thumbs up if you took any value out of this review so far and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to never miss any upcoming reviews or other valuable content. Now let's sum this review up and look at the points. The Perlins Vakita got 18 points in total. This camera is really a specialist. It cannot keep up with the other cameras in terms of resolution, frame rates and so on. But it can do some things beyond any comparison that are most likely very important for many technical divers. It can dive extremely deep without any additional housing. It is really streamlined and can easily be mounted on a scooter and it does the depth dependent color correction really well. If you do not use it to over 60 meters anyway, it's a bit overpriced in my opinion. One very important tip, use the right SD card with this camera. The reason why my last video about backup lights had no underwater footage was that I tried to film it with a Vakita but used the wrong SD card. The class and write and read speed was ok, so that I ignored the hint in the manual to only use SanDisk Extreme, Extreme Plus or Extreme Pro cards. The one I used was a Toshiba and all the video files just contained a couple of seconds, so all the footage was pretty useless. Sorry for that, but lesson learned, just use SanDisk SD cards with the Vakita. The GoPro, the old top dog, performed very well with 22 points. They do a really good job in terms of image quality and image stabilization. However, the other cameras have some really nice features divers will love, like the color correction, the modularity and so on. The winner, but with just a tiny advantage of 23 points, is the Insta360. They do a great job in image quality and especially with their app that lets you easily edit and publish your videos right after the dive while sitting on the dive boat. The camera is relatively cheap for its quality and the modularity gives you so many options more. I will use this camera in the future with the 4K mod when filming my students in classes for video analysis during the class. But I also own the 360 mod which gives me a lot of great creative options for underwater films. I love to see somebody produce a housing for deeper dives for this camera and I'd love if they could do such a superb image stabilization GoPro has built in their cameras. Still, the Insta360 is my number one camera for classes and for underwater and top side action footage. Which of the cameras would you rather get or use already or do you have some other alternatives when it comes to underwater action cameras? Please leave me a comment and tell me. If you found this review helpful, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell and watch my other videos. See you there.